Support for Steppin Out comes in part from the Kristovich family in honor of Mary Lou and Bill Kristovich. Peggy Scott Laborde and welcome to Steppin' Out, spotlighting the New Orleans area's arts and entertainment scene. Seated at our table tonight, Susan McClay of the Louisiana Museum Foundation, here to tell us about their Founders Ball and Baroness Pentalba exhibit in conjunction with the Tricentennial. Welcome, Susan. Hello. Thank Glad you. you could be here. He's back, Randy Fratell, here to tell us about next week's conference on improvisation, New Orleans' gift to the modern world. Welcome back, Randy. Hello. Well, happy to be here. Hey. And, oh my goodness, Pierre de Pentaba, a descendant of the famed Pentaba family here in New Orleans for the Founders Ball and to have a general good time. And, and Pierre will also uh, share with us some special don a donation from the family for the uh, auction that they'll have up, plus an actual piece from the exhibit. Welcome, Pierre. Thank good you. to see you. And Alan Smason, he's back of theatercriticism.com. Poppy returns next week, but first up, Randy. Your vision. <laughs> my vision, yeah. The Im Improv Conference uh, grew out of my, the book that I published in 2015, and we are exploring improvisation across the arts as New Orleans' gift to the modern world. Including culinary, which we did talk about, uh, of course, last week. You have Alice Waters coming. Our kickoff Friday Ooh. night um, mm -hmm. next week yeah. is um, mm -hmm. Alice Waters of Chez Panisse and mm -hmm. Edible Schoolyard, mind yeah. you. Who, uh -huh. who we have five of those here in New Orleans, yeah. uh -huh. her most successful satellite. Uh -huh. Davia Nelson, the kitchen sister of uh, NPR, uh -huh. a Peabody Award winning. Um, Ben Burkett, a farmer activist uh, who's always been involved with our edible schoolyard here, and our own native Richard McCarthy coming back from New York to right. moderate the panel. But it's not just food, it's, it's just all fields, of course, including music. I'll be involved we'll be with a literary panel, and, and there'll be a theater panel, a long form theater panel, not comic improv. This isn't a comic improv conference. Mm -hmm. They've kind of stolen the word, uh -huh. <laughs> but it, it's a much larger phenomenon than that. Um, we'll have a, um, a music. Uh, panel with Courtney Bryan of Tulane and Jenna Sherry of the Birdfoot um, Festival, and Mike Palera is going to be Mike with Palera you. Mike Palera is well. Uh, we 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 have on Sunday mm -hmm. we have master classes, including Mike Palera's on jazz. Mm -hmm. uh, these are held at NOCA. They're only twenty five dollars, and you can find them at ImprovConferenceNola.com. Okay, great. But you've got also I have a political side. We have a political side because you know I published my book in March of 2015, and three months later here comes the great improviser down the golden escalator, <laughs> proving at one fell swoop that I'd uh, left out a chapter, the dark side, the bizarro <laughs> side. Well, uh, well, uh, I know you have experts um, from that realm, including folks from Politico. And Politico, the mm. uh, political cartoonist. Uh, one of the things we're doing is the. People People involved in the panels are not only commentators on the nature of improv, but improvisers themselves. So, mm -hmm. um, what's more improvisational than doing a political cartoon right. every week? And then on, Mel Chin. Mel goodness. Chin I mean, that's uh, returning to New Orleans uh, uh -huh. after his uh, Prospect One uh, uh, big splash, and and also this summer a big splash in Times Square with an augmented reality piece. So yeah, and you're also it all, all came town. together. You're also all well, it's town. all around the French Quarter. It's mostly mm -hmm. at the Jazz Museum uh, at the Mint uh, on the third floor. Um, but, uh, the NOCA um, master class, the master classes are at NOCA on mm -hmm. Sunday. Um, Saturday night there's a conference. I'm sorry, a concert with Courtney Bryan's quartet at the uh, George Wien Center on mm -hmm. Rampart Street. Um, the HNOC w is is um, bringing in an improviser from the south of France, a very prominent um, improviser, 
who will improvise the score to the 1915 Snow White. Oh my goodness. <laughs> at, at HNOC, I believe on Royal Street. Uh -huh. So we have a lot yeah. going on. And we should mention Hamilton Fish, back to politics. I mean, that's Hamilton amazing. Fish of yeah. the Nation's Institute and, mm -hmm. and uh, the New Republic and a long history of family and uh -huh. politics. And Gwen Tompkins, back and to Gwen the music. Tompkins, huh? yeah. our, our and Gwen Tompkins, yeah. And again, Gwen. she's someone who in her oral histories, in her interviews, she's having to improvise. She may have a list that mm -hmm. she works from, but she's got to be in the flow. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, congratulations. Thank and you. And I know this is your baby. You've this been is my baby. On this for it's very exciting to bring this into the world. Well, we're lucky to have it. And New Orleans Magazine's quiz queen, Julia Street, has a question for us. Last time, Goldie Joseph gave us the names of an upstate town that's known for its Christmas decorations and the town's body of water. Okay, Natchitoches, and of course, Cane River Lake. Now, tonight's question. In the local spoof song, 12 Yats of Christmas, what was the gift given on the first day? And name the band that recorded the song. Email your answers to steppinout at wyes.org. Our prize is a year subscription to Louisiana Life magazine. A pair of free admission passes to either the Audubon Zoo, Aquarium of the America, or the Butterfly Garden and Insectarium. You can go to wyes.org for our online calendar to see our lineup of events, including John Rankin and Washboard Chaz performing at the Combs Hotel next Tuesday night. You can also link to our WYES YouTube channel to see our program. Now, Susan and Pierre. Susan, the tricentennial, what a year it's been. Uh, so many historic events taking place celebrating 300 years. But you all have to be like the, the top and the capper at the end there, huh? Well, that's correct. Back in April, we opened a fantastic exhibit in the Cabildo. It was called Recovered Memories. It came from Spain. It was up for about four and a half months. It was just fabulous. That's how we started it. The king and queen of Spain came to visit, walked through the exhibit. It was a fantastic experience. But even more, well, as exciting, at the end of the year, December 1st, we're opening a brand new exhibit in the Cabildo called The Baroness de Pontalba and the Rise of Jackson Square. It's going to be fantastic. And of course, you're going to have a special event, and one of your special guests is the gentleman and his parents <laughs> who's sitting here. And Correct. explain the connection to the Baroness. My connection to the Baroness? Well, I would be a fifth great grandson. Mm. Uh, in direct line, but uh, mostly the connection is through documents. It's a, you know, a connection through research to her personality, how interesting she was. That's how I mostly connect with her. Well, we have to uh, definitely credit uh, P Peter Patu, yes. who's certainly a friend of the Louisiana State Museum, and a lot of folks yes. know Peter, um, who sort of stumbled upon <laughs> mm. um, a, a town in search of a Joan of, my understanding, you finished mm -hmm. the story for me, Joan of Arc um, site, and, and got to meet you because he was in this town. Explain, Absolutely. please. Well, uh, he was having, you know, a last day in France, and he thought, well, I'm going to see Joan of Arc sites. And he went to the town of Saint-Lys, where he saw that um, Montlevec, our town, was closed, and he thought, I'm going to see if there's something there. And he went to the tourist office, called the house, because they have our number, and said, can we visit the house? And we said, yes. Well, you can visit the ground, at least, so come. And actually, I went outside to meet him, we discussed, and then I invited him into the house to show him artifacts. That will be on the exhibit, by mm -hmm. the way. And that's how we connected, and uh, things led to another, and I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. So as you just said, uh, some of the items from the actual house will be on exhibit at, at, at the Cabildo as well. That's now let's cool. talk about the very special event, the Founders Day. And by the way, we're sipping old fashions tonight in honor of the fact that this will be served yes, at, it will. <laughs> at the event uh, coming up December the 1st. But um, Founders Day, it, some folks will be encouraged to dress in costume. Yes, it's a ball. Of the period. A ball, that's right. Uh, it will be a ball. And there will be an auction, an yes. auction as well. And the Vitaba family is donating an item. And could you please show? We have a little show and tell here. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the first item would be. Well, that's this, in that's, the exhibit. That's not so that would be. No, <laughs> no, we'll show yeah. that in just a moment. Yes. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. that's okay. That's okay. okay. No, the show bottle. us this. The yes. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay, that's so okay. So this is an 18th century bottle that was um, part of Don Andres's Almonaster possession. So Michaela's Almonaster. Roxas' father 
was Don Andres. And what does it say in there? Explain well, it says uh, Almonaster, so that was his name. Mm -hmm. And uh, it ended up in Montlevec in some ways, probably when Michaela came back to France. So she brought her father's mm -hmm. possession with her, including this bottle. And so we always had them. And for the first time, they coming back to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. For, well, for the first time since the 19th century, actually. My goodness. Mm. And that will be auctioned off during the Founders' mm. Day Ball. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. It will be at the ball. And then you also kindly brought uh, yeah. a part of the exhibit. Uh, very generous. Ex explain that, please. The, the one I was about to show. So <laughs> <laughs> We're not Sorry auctioning that. that. <laughs> no, no. Uh -huh. So this is a candlestick which was designed by Michaela's son, Gaston, mm. who was an artist. He would draw, he would make bronze. And what's interesting about this one is that it was made in New Orleans oh. in 1849. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was designed and casted in New Orleans. And tell us about mm. this um, inscription. Absolutely. So as you can see, it is signed Gaston de Pontalba, that's his name, uh, Nouvelle Orleans, that's New Orleans, in 1849. Mm -hmm. He went to New Orleans with his mother between 1847 and 1851. And he made a lot of drawings of the street of New Orleans and mm -hmm. took some time to design some objects as well. How wonderful. And as we said, your parents are coming for the ball as well, mm -hmm. aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely, they're looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> are you thinking about being in costume or are you just going to be formally attired? We, we will be in costume. Oh, how wonderful. But uh -huh. what will come as is a secret so far. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you all have so many um, wonderful things year in and year out. And of course, it's not just the Cabildo, the Louisiana State Museum in New Orleans. It's Presbyter, it's the Mint, right. uh, which is now the New Orleans Jazz Museum. Mm -hmm. So, raising funds for all. That's correct. We've been in a business since 1981. We were founded basically to enable community donations for the State Museum, which is a system of 13 properties statewide, but nine are in the French Quarter. And the other one that's key to this is the 1850 house, which is in the lower Pontalba, which of course Pierre's great, great, great grandmother is responsible for. That, and people, I think that's one that's underappreciated. A lot, a lot of people much. don't know, but you yeah. get to see what life was like in the 1850s exactly. by going in uh, to that one as well. Uh, right. Love that too. So as we know, uh, the Pintalba family <laughs> and the, Christina Vela's great mm -hmm. book, you know, the relationship between uh, she and her father-in-law was not a good one. He shot her how many times? Four times. Four uh, times. If I okay. correctly. Four. And then, unfortunately, she and her husband <laughs> were certainly at odds, too, mm. such that she came back. But we should recommend um, the, the late, great Christina Vela's book. It's really it's very special. If it had not been for that book, we could not be putting on this exhibit. And if I could briefly mention, uh, Randolph Delahanty yes. is a guest curator at the State Museum. He will be curating the show or the exhibit. Uh, he had the pleasure of going to France, as did I, to visit Montlevec to see many of these items. He selected what would be in the show, and Pierre's father, the current Baron de Pontalba, agreed to loan all these wonderful, exciting items. Very generous. And if Randy Delahanty's name sounds familiar, because it's, his resume is long, but mm -hmm. including one of my favorite books, New Orleans, Elegance and Decadence, which he did, of course, with Richard Sexton. And you told me another yes. item that's, tell us about yes. that. Another very, well, actually two. We'll have have two of the wine bottles and two other very exciting items is Randy has partnered again with Richard. Richard has taken some brand new photographs for the exhibit. He has donated two prints, which we, we're having beautifully framed, that will be in the auction as well. But they're of, actually, the the crypt uh, that's in well, the floor. Various huh? elements that okay. Randy will be highlighting. Uh, he's telling the story of Don Almanester. Her who dad. Was Michaela's father. father. He was, uh, Randy says that Don Almanester was actually New Orleans' first philanthropist. He was very oh. generous and provided the funds to rebuild the Cabildo, the Presbyter, uh, and the cathedral after the great New Orleans fire of 1788. And then, of course, 60 years later, Michaela Almanester, de Pont, who we know of as the Baroness de Pontalba, came back to New Orleans and built her two iconic, beautiful, we call them apartment buildings mm -hmm. today, but back then they were townhouses, which spurred the city to beautify the Place d'Armes and turn it into the Jackson Square that we know today. And the Archdiocese, of course, could not have these two new buildings eclipsing the cathedral. So the cathedral became bigger and grander. And he is actually buried, uh, her father he was, is buried in the cathedral. Yes, well, and he, the photo is of that. Well, and, there's yeah. a, a beautiful, uh, I guess it's not exactly a headstone since it's in the floor. Right. But Randy, uh, Richard has taken a photograph of this and it's very stylistically going to be in the exhibit. So you'll be able to walk on it, which is, you know, something you really 
really can't do in the cathedral. No. Uh, as well as other por uh, pictures that he's taken that helps to further the story from an architectural perspective, mm -hmm. as well as a human story of the Baroness and Don Almanester and S Joseph Xavier, the father-in-law who shot her, et cetera. <laughs> When um, when someone goes to visit the exhibit, uh, what would be among your favorite items that we'll get to look for? Uh, that's a good question. Well, my favorite item would be Michaela's portrait, the, mm -hmm. her main portrait, a state portrait, which is coming to New Orleans for the first time. And mm -hmm. where is that coming from? From our house. From uh, your house. Day, so. <laughs> so there are a lot of empty walls, and it's a little uh, uh, yeah, more roomy. One is yeah. very empty right now, but <laughs> it's okay. That's we wanted that. So very generous. <laughs> so once again, for more information and tickets, the website? Uh, www.thelmf.com. Dot o -R -G. <laughs> and I'm so glad. I guess we have Peter Patu to thank also. We do. We do. But it has uh, enabled you to come to New Orleans many times and hopefully love the city, too. I do love the city. That's why I came back. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. And thanks thank for your generosity. And now it's time for our Local Artist Spotlight. Tonight we are showcasing some works by local artists that will be featured in the Green Project's upcoming Salvation Gala and Auction. This is Puzzle Table by... Paul Troiano, it's wonderful. And the other one is Lamp 4000 PSI by Anna and Vlad Glaze. The gala and auction will be next Thursday night in the Arbor Room of City Park's Pop Fountain. Go to 501auctions.com slash salvation to purchase a ticket for the event. And the organization, as you may know, focuses on recycling, building materials, which they sell through their store, and present programs on environmental education. And now, Alan. Well, it's already after Thanksgiving, and while the smell of turkey still permeates in the air, we can start to smell candy canes and fruit cakes, and they're starting to make their way evident as well. It's holiday time, and that that means a lot of seasons greetings on the stage. So let's first off talk about the blizzard that's going to be hitting New Orleans around the time that uh, the holiday season starts up. That's the, because mandatory merriment is coming to the stage at uh, the uh, brand new Southern Rep Theater. So let's start about that. That's Leslie Casté and Ian Hawk. They wrote this piece. It's a holiday classic which incorporates a lot of the old holiday standards that you'd you know, get to know and expect every time that you turn on the radio around the holiday time. Also on stage will be Meredith Long, Clint Johnson, Chivas Migo, uh, Michael, and Alan Payne will actually be making a little bit of a brief appearance as well. But everybody heads over to Benny's Bar. Of course, that's a place to head to during a blizzard. It's filled with lots of holiday standards, the jukebox kind of a show, as I said, and they even are going to have a brand new original song by Banu Gibson, our mm. own very, very much beloved singer. Uh, this will be the third major offering uh, of this very short season so far for Southern Rep, so make it to Mandatory Merriment starting up November the 28th, and it'll be on stage again uh, and through the holidays until right before um, uh, the holiday. Uh, Many folks probably have seen over the years Clint Johnson in the Shakespeare Festival correct. activities. Okay. He's also been on stage at the World War II well, Museum. I, absolutely, he has, but I just have to say he has a wonderful vo singing voice that I don't think many people realize. One he the, can sing. One right? of the other things that a lot of people don't know about Clint is he plays piano. That was evident in Pump Boys and Dinettes. He was yes. in that recently. Yeah. And he will be playing piano when Alan Payne makes his appearance because Alan, of course, is normally the music director. So watch for that as well. Okay. Again, that's going to be uh, on Bayou Road uh, at Southern Rep. Now, a few years ago, A.J. Allegra played the role of Bob Crumpet. That was the Santa's helper figure, if you will, at Macy's department store, uh, made famous by David Sedaris, the writer <laughs> who did it on National Public Radio. And this grew uh, from his experiences at Macy's department store into to a play which he wrote. It's strictly for adults now and it can be a lot of fun for those of you who uh, maybe enjoy reading a little bit more about the Grinch or Scrooge. Uh, it's a, a photo I want to show right now of AJ and you'll re recall really <laughs> how seriously funny he was perhaps. Uh, AJ uh, played uh, this this uh, downtrodden character. Uh, he's actually taking that experience now and paying it forward. So what's he doing? He is now directing Alex Martinez Wallace in the very same role at the Teatro Wigo Theater that'll be starting up next Friday. And for those who know Alex and his inner child, this will be a role to uh, be seen. Uh, he's going to have a blast doing it. And I know that having the experience of having AJ as a director, that's going to be wonderful as well. That's Alan, a, okay, yeah. so it's it's the Santa Land Diaries, which many folks have heard on, on uh, NPR, of right. course. So they're they're kind of depicting it in a theatrical
practical sense? Yes. In other words, uh, he, he'll elf? have a monologue, basically. Okay. It's, it's a series of, of, of a monologue, basically. That he, and he, he talks about, well, you know, have you ever noticed that that uh, Santa is an anagram for Satan? <laughs> <laughs> As an example. Seven so five. you can understand yeah. how uh. that goes. But the St. Land Diaries at the Teatro Wego, that's the smaller of the stages uh, in West Wego. And again, various times, go check that out at jps.org. Now, meanwhile, again, holidays... Uh, BB Stage Door Canteen, they have always done a wonderful holiday show with the Victory Bells. Three of the Victory Bells are donning their gay apparel, as it were, to become Christmas bells at the newest original offering that they have, Christmas Bells Are Ringing. That's going to be uh, bowing next weekend as well. Now, the Victory Bells here are going to be uh, Christian Tarzetti. Uh, that's the lady in the center. If you will look at Christian, i got to tell you, this is going to be her last New Orleans appearance before she heads to the Great White Way. She has been, if you will, discovered, and she's going to be, um, I think, featured in a number of productions coming up. She's a fabulous talent. You may remember she was Ariel and Rivertown Productions uh, in The Little, Little Mermaid. Um, she's going to be heading along with uh, Jessica Mixon and Skylyn Rossell, uh, this wonderful new Christmas show, Christmas Bells Are Ringing. So bring the kids, bring the old people, bring the new people. Everybody's <laughs> going to have a good time because it's really going to be fun. And, you know, they don't do uh, anything, uh, you know, uh, half, half over there. They really pull out all the stops. They have great music. Uh, good food. If you want to, you know, enjoy a uh, brunch or, or perhaps an evening uh, dinner, it's great there as well. Now, for those of you who want a little bit of New Orleans flair, you know, those singers of song and those heartthrobs of harmony are back. That's the Big Easy Boys. And uh, the Big Easy Boys, of course, led by Rich Arnold. Uh, they'll uh, again be on stage at the Rivertown Theaters for the Forming Arts. And I should let you know that also joining them on stage will be the Big Easy Girls. And they're not easy girls, but they are Big Easy Girls, okay? <laughs> so there you are. <laughs> they'll be... Uh, okay. Okay. Singing a stage, and again, Let It Snow is the name of this show. Um, again, a holiday-themed uh, Big Easy Boys and Girls show. Again, Sunday matinees at 2, and I think the evening performances are at 8 o'clock, and that'll be at the Rivertown Theaters. Okay, time for our picks of the week. Susan. Oh, well, you have to come to the Cabildo to see another tricentennial exhibit. We love you, New Orleans. It's on the ground floor of the Cabildo, and it's a walk down nostalgic lane for lo locals, and tourists love it as well. Okay, Randy. Well, following our conference on improv next week, the week after is the Improvisations Gala, mm -hmm. the first annual gala for the Jazz Museum oh, at, the, at the Mint. And um, for the patron party, a little guy named John Baptiste mm -hmm. will be playing. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a coup. Congrats. Yeah. Hey. Um, Pierre. Oh, I'm going with Susan on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, once again, it's great to have you here, Alan. Just in time for Beaujolais Nouveau, right? So <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Angels in America just closed on Broadway this summer. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, a great showcase for Nathan Lane and, and Andrew Garfield. Uh, they're going to be doing a reading of this on the 30th anniversary of the show. Uh, this is a, basically for World AIDS Day. This will be at the First Unitarian Universalist Church. Michael McKelvey had, had alerted me to this. So, again, it's... It's going to be Saturday, November 30th, one night only, and I think tickets are between $10 and uh, $25. Oh, wow. And now my picks. The Audubon Zoo is debuting a holiday lights exhibit. Here is a sneak preview. Here we go. Audubon Zoo Lights, of course, opens this Saturday and runs throughout December on select nights from 5.30 to 9.30. Visit at Audubon Institute's website for more information. And before we go on, I have to say, I'm, sit I'm sitting next to, of course, Randy Vertel, <laughs> whose dad, Rodney, was responsible for the gorillas way back when. Huh? He, he um, ran for mayor on the platform the zoo needed a gorilla, got 300 votes, and went out, bought two gorillas, gave him to the zoo. <laughs> 
announced they should be called red beans and rice. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> well, we remember that well. Also, the music that you heard was actually, it was a combo. I was there that night, opening night. And the music is Wendell Brunius, Matt Perrine, mm. okay, and Siva Benet. But the good news is that Wendell, who had had a heart attack right. a few mm. months ago, is doing very well. And I oh, talked good. to him. He looked great, too. So anyway, that was good news. Anyway, moving on, you can sail with Santa on the steamboat Natchez tomorrow on the cruise that benefits the St. Bernard Battered Women's Shelter and Crescent House. Admission is free for those who bring a new unwrapped gift for donation. Visit the Natchez's website to learn more. Looking ahead, the Maison du Puy Hotel is having a special holiday happy hour and Christmas tree lighting ceremony next Friday as part of its Sippin' in the Courtyard series. Admission is free. Visit the hotel's website for more information. And don't miss the new musical All is Calm, The Christmas Truce of 1914 at Noka's Lupin Hall. The play is based on an actual event that took place on the Western Front, of course, during World War I. Visit noka.com for tickets. And thank you all so very much for being here. Being here and thank you for watching. Good night.